Hey, I'm Mike Baccarell, and today we're going to take a look at three 251 chord licks from Joe DiOrio. Let's take a look. All three of these chord licks come from Joe DiOrio's book, Fusion Guitar, which I highly recommend you pick up. Now, it's, it's a book full of etudes over, over standard chord changes with a lot of his intervallic stuff and a lot of those kind of things going on too. But before every set of changes, there's, a, there, there's a, a set of suggested chord voicings. I highly recommend spending some time with his chord voicings because he has some really interesting voice leading options, and that's where all three of these, these lines come from. This first line is a major 251, and it's in the key of E flat major. So let's take a look at what's going on there. So the first voice thing is an F minor 7. And it's just a basic F minor 7. So we have F on the 8th fret here on the 5th string, A flat, which is the 3rd, on the 6th fret of the 4th string, E flat, which is the flat 7, on the 8th fret of the 3rd string, and then we have F, the root, on the 6th fret of the 2nd string. So that's the first voicing. It's a half note. Then he jumps up here, which is another F minor 7 chord. We have F, E flat, A flat, C. So there's our two F minor 7 voicings. So he's playing a little melody on top. Then we jump down to just a regular kind of B flat 13 chord. So we have B flat on the 6th string, 6th fret. A flat on this on the uh, fourth string, sixth fret. Then we have D natural, which is the third, on the seventh fret of the third string. S uh, <clears throat> G natural, which is the thirteen, on the eighth fret of the second string. And then we have the root on the sixth fret of the first string. Then we jump up and we do a tritone sub. So instead of playing B flat seven, we play E flat seven, which I talked about in a couple of previous videos is the same chord, just different root, because the because the third and seventh, the tritone of the dominant seventh chord, remains the same. So he jumps into this voicing that always gives me a little trouble, which is an E9 chord. So we have E here on the 7th fret 5th string, D on the 7th fret 3rd string, F sharp, which is the 9th, on the, the 2nd string 7th fret, and then we have G sharp here on the 4th fret of the 1st string. So it gives you a little bit of a stretch there. And then we land on this E flat major 7 chord, which is E flat, <clears throat> G, and then I'll cross the third fret here. We have B flat, D, and G again. Now for some extra color, you could you could actually get rid of that third here, the G, and replace it with an F. So just bar cross all these notes on the third fret and then add the E flat at the bottom. This gives you an E flat major nine chord. So this whole line has this melody line. Just some really nice voice leading for for a 2-5. So the second line is a minor 2-5. And we're, and we're in the key of C minor. So we have D minor 7 flat 5 and G7. So the first voicing is just a, it's a drop 3 D minor 7 a flat 5 voicing. We have 5th fret here on the 5th string, 5th fret on the 3rd string, 6th fret on the 2nd string, and 4th fret on the 1st string. So that, that's a D minor 7 flat 5 voicing. Same thing as this, we're just moving this note to here. Then we have this G13 sharp 9 voicing. So we have 3rd fret on the 6th string, we're going to bar across the 3rd fret on the 4th string too. We're skipping the 5th string. 4th fret on the 3rd string, 5th fret on the 2nd string, and then pinky on the 6th fret of the 1st string. So that gives you, you know, a root, flat 7, 3rd, 13, and a sharp 9. So we can see the, the melody is already going up. Now we have an A flat diminished 7th chord, which is really a G7 flat 9, which is not the root. So we have 6, 7, 6, 7 on the 4th, 3rd, 2nd, 1st string. Mm -hmm. 
Now, now this last voicing here <clears throat> is a G seven flat nine. We're just we're just omitting the third. So you have tenth fret here on the fifth string, tenth fret on the third string, ninth fret on the second string, and tenth fret with our pinky on the second string. And we land here on the C minor seven, which we can just bar across here, or we can you know, do this. But we, we want that top note to be C because we're going. There's our melody, right? So for this, I, I, I borrow across and then just use my fingers to pick it. Or you could you know, just borrow across and just do that, that big bar with your, with your third finger there like that. Now I want to point out that you can mess around with some of these voicings to play them on different strings too, because this right here, and this right here, this, you know, here on the 10th fret, the 6th string, 10th fret, 4th string, 10th fret, 3rd string, and then 9th fret on the 2nd string is more typical um, minor 7 flat 5 voicing. These are the same voicings. Same exact notes in the same exact order. So if we don't have enough range to climb that far up, maybe we could play the whole thing in one area. And this right here, the same voicing as this, the same top part. So I have the 8th fret here on the 5th string, ninth fret, ninth fret on the 3rd and 4th string, and 11th fret on the 2nd string with my pinky. Then I can jump up to this voicing, right there. So I've got the 11th fret on this 5th uh, string, 12th fret on the 4th string, 10th fret on the 3rd string, 12th fret on, this, on the 2nd string. And I could stay here for that same voicing. Right here. So now this entire run stays right in this span of frets. So if I don't have enough range to play the whole thing, I can play the whole thing in one spot now. It's kind of cool. Now this last line is also over a minor 2-5 and it's in the same key, C minor. This first voicing is more of our garden variety uh, minor 7 flat 5. 5th fret, 6th fret, 5th fret, 6th fret on the 5th, 4th, 3rd, and 2nd string. D minor 7 flat 5. So now what we're going to do for the second voicing, because our melody climbs up, we're going to keep the same basic voicing. We have to refinger it though, because we want our melody to go up here. So we could finger it like that. To me, that's a little uncomfortable, but if it works for you, it works for you. So what I actually do is I, and then I refinger. So I bar across here with my with my first finger on the fifth fret, and came my second finger on the sixth fret there. Same thing. So the, these are both D minor seven flat fives. This just has the eleventh in it now. Replacing the third with the eleventh, and then we jump up again to our our really familiar to most guitar players' voices. Our it's our uh, seven sharp nine chord. It's our Hendrix chord, and the, but it's just in the key of G now. So we have <clears throat> G, B, F, and B flat. We have tenth fret, fifth string, ninth fret, fourth string, tenth fret, third string, eleventh fret, second string. So we have, and our second to last voicing is just going to be a G seven flat nine. So we went from sharp nine to flat nine, and what, what I'm going to do for that is rather than finger anything differently, I'm just going to bar across my finger that's holding the third here on the ninth fret, so I now have the flat nine. And then I just land here, C minor 7. This time I want the fifth on top, I don't want the root on top, so I can play it like this too, easily. And this is a really useful voicing. I use that a lot in my comping. Because you can create a cool little melodic movement there just by messing with those extensions. So the main thing to pay attention to here is, is, not, is your top notes of your chords. Because that is what's going to give you some really good voice leading, you know, to create little melodies that can lead you to and from different places. And that's and if you listen to all good compers, you know, whether it's on piano or, you know, guitar, whether it's guys like Jim Hall, Ed Bickert, Ted Green... Kirby Hancock, McCoy Tunner, they all have some cool little melodies going on under, you know, the soloist or the melody 
that aren't conflicting, but they're just creating motion, which is moving our ears to a resolution. This is why chords are one of my favorite subjects. The more I know about chords and how they function the, and how to move them, the more everything else on the guitar gets for me too. So I highly recommend taking some time to take, you know, any record voices you know, and make sure you're, you know what notes those all are as far as not just the letter name, but how they function and what's around them. You know, so, so for example, if I know here's a G7 chord, basic G7, I know that my fifth's here on top. Well, my 13 was a whole step above. So if I, you know, I could do that. And, and if I know my roots here, and my flat's nine, my flat nine's here, my sharp nine here, my regular nine's here. So I can move all, I can manipulate all these different things without having to learn a bunch of different chord voicings. I'm just manipulating the chord voicing I already know to do what I want it to. And that's, and, and that's what Joe DiOrio is doing here. So I hope you'll take that and run with that. I hope you get a lot out of it because there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. So thanks for checking out this lesson. Keep practicing. I'll see you next time.